Okay, hey everybody, thanks for uh, hanging in there and staying. If you're watching this, you watch the rest of the Mass, or maybe you just jumped in for this if you went to Dale, went to Mass in the church. So thanks for this. We'll talk just briefly about uh, dogs and cats go to heaven. Will your dog get to heaven? It wants to know. It's very glad you stayed watching. Uh, and just briefly here, you see our beautiful sunflowers. There's an awesome lady in the church named Sue. God bless you, Sue. Dropped by and dropped off those flowers. Really great. Good for Sunday because they're sunflowers. Uh, so, and you see here, these are the, some of the remains of my potatoes. They're ready to harvest when they look like they're dying. They're not dying. It means the potatoes are good. And I, I got another video coming a little bit later. I have to edit it all together because we did harvest the bucket and we got, I think, seven or eight potatoes from the two that we put in each of them. So, really cool. These will harvest these a little bit later. Okay, will dogs go to heaven? So, I want to do a rap video about it, um, make a rap song about it, but. The more I worked on it, the more I just thought, you know, it, the answer is either yes or no. It depends on how you come down on the issue. And I've been writing a book about it probably for almost two years now. I mean, I've had Cradley four years, and I've thought about this long before I got my dog, in case anyone thinks I'm biased. Uh, so that's kind of telling you where I think the answer goes. And so there's a lot to say, and I'm not going to say it all here. I'll give you just a brief part because of today's gospel, right? So, so. For those who want to stop watching, the answer is yes. But there's a condition, I think. Now, I don't know. Obviously, I've never been to heaven yet. Um, I've never even been to a town called Heaven or Paradise, right? I'm, I grew up in Lakewood, and here I'm in Point Pleasant, which is very pleasant. We think heaven is better than pleasant. Heaven is not pleasant. Heaven is oh, amazing. Okay. So, uh, this is how I think it works. And I, I know a little bit about the scriptures. I was, well, I hope that's obvious to you. Uh, I studied some theology and uh, writing about, write about it. So there's a lot to say, and I'll probably make a video too because not everybody reads today. But people know how to read, but they don't. They're not. They don't have the attention span for a long book. Uh, so I'll probably make a longer video about it. I intended to like do a rap, and then the video, the rap turns into more of just a rap about like just wanting to get to heaven, and then who you find in heaven, and will you see your dog or cat there? So let's jump to that. So couple things you got to remember so first you have today's gospel right which is huge because in today's gospel right that woman said you know but even the dog right Jesus says it's not right to take food of the children and give it to the dogs and what does she say and we know she's persevering in prayer and all that you can watch the homily but she says yeah but even the dogs get the scraps to fall from their master's table and Jesus he's like woman great is your faith right now he doesn't so he doesn't reject her right nor does he deny her logic so we all want you to hold on to that right so dogs going to heaven cats going to heaven is an important topic for us who love them i want to know about this but what the gospel is about persevering in prayer being a disciple is a lot more important in fact i think the dogs or cats get in heaven is related to that how so here's what we think here's what i think and i think it's in the scriptures. so god there's a lot about animals in the bible in the Jewish temple, the Jewish temple, if you were there in Jerusalem and you saw, uh, and I got to go to Jerusalem, it was awesome. Uh, they had all kinds of fruits and vegetables and all of creation was decorated around the temple. It's interesting why about that. Maybe you have to read the book when it comes out. But the Bible talks a lot about animals. Uh, there's a prophet in the Old Testament uh, and this guy's riding his donkey and he can't see this angel in front of him, but the donkey can. And God gives the donkey the ability to speak. And it says, hey, what are you doing, man? You can't see the angel? I'm not going that way. right? So he gives this animal, a donkey, the ability to speak, to repudiate his human, who felt like a, a jack, a blank blank. right? <laughs> That's a joke there, but I want to keep it clean for the kids. Uh, Jesus will say, right, the Father knows every hair on your head. Right, and he also knows a sparrow can't fall in the woods without your Jesus says a sparrow, a little birdie can't fall in the woods without your father knowing. And then he says, "You're worth more than many sparrows." And that's interesting. So sparrows have value to be known by God when they die, and yet you have more value than them. Interesting, right? Jesus will say, um, you know, talking about the Sabbath day, and he'll say, like, you know, look, you'll, you know. You'll pick up, you know, if your uh, ox or sheep gets stuck in a ditch on the Sabbath, you're going to do work and get it out of there, and you're worth more. A man is worth more than a sheep, right? So sheep have value because that's what's being offered at the Passover meal. They're certainly being offered in the sacrificial system for 
a long, long time for the Jews. Uh, and Jesus will say, a man is worth more than a sheep. So I want to hold that out there because I don't want to just only pick passages that are favorable for making this case. And the case I'm going to make is that, yeah, your dog or cat can get to heaven. And in today's logic, again, in Jesus, he doesn't deny that woman's logic. He acts upon it, in fact. Right? And the logic is, well, the kids eat first. And then after the kids eat, the dogs and cats, right, the dogs particularly, didn't say cats, they'll get, they get theirs. And I think this is, in fact, how it works. In the beginning of creation, the book of Genesis, God makes male or female, right? He makes us in his image. And he says to us, have dominion over creation and subdue it. That he puts creation in our hands, right? And so, Jesus also will say later on in John, I think, chapter 16, he'll say, if you ask, if you do the Father's will, you, Jesus says, you love me, you keep my commandments, right? So if you do God's will, you keep his commandments, Jesus says, if you ask your heavenly father for an egg, he's not going to hand you a stone. You ask him for a fish, he's not going to hand you a scorpion, right? Um, you know, and he says, if you keep the commandments on that day, ask my father anything in my name, and he will grant it. You wrap all these things together. This is the short version. I make a longer case in the, in the book, and there's one more point I'll say. But you, wrap, you wrap all these things together, and I think it works like this. If you... If you get to heaven, when you die, if you get to heaven, you can ask God to raise up a particular dog or cat, or any particular creature, frankly, right? I think there's people who will die and they want God to raise up a horse, or maybe there's a farmer, no offense to the farmers, maybe who loved a goat, or a sheep, right? Or a, a tarantula, you know, maybe that's Spider-Man, right? Creation is given to us. You can raise a chicken as a pet, and you can raise it for chicken parm, and I love chicken parm. In fact, there's a great woman in the parish who drops off chicken parm, and I'm like, when I'm like really busy and I don't have enough time to like make a meal or something like that, suddenly her and her husband, Bob, Marjorie and Bob, she's a great cook, or at least she makes great chicken parm. I don't know if she makes other things that are great, but her husband is an athlete and he's in good shape, so she probably does. But she'll drop off like a tray of chicken parm and spaghetti, and it's got a real thick mozzarella, which I love. It's delicious, breaded, fabulous. But you get to decide whether to eat a chicken or to love it. And I think it works like this. Again, you get to heaven, you can ask God to raise up a particular animal, a dog or a cat or any kind of animal, and and he will. In fact, it doesn't even really have to happen in that order, I think. I mean, God, who knows you? You get to heaven, you know, he's there. We have this idea in theology that anything that is good here is picked up even in greater way there. Right? This is why Jesus says, I hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, it has not even dawned on man what God has prepared for those who love him. That like you think, you think love is good, physical love. You think friendship is good. You think having you know some wine playing the guitar with your brother around a fire pit is good. You think having a pipe on the back deck. Yeah, hello uh, uh, to Dave and Maggie out there. God bless you guys. Congratulations on your engagement. Enjoying a pipe together. Right, this great couple engaged. She's got a great voice. He makes good music. They're gonna make good music together. God bless them. You think that is good? It's even better in heaven. Right, the mirth, the joy, the happiness here is only a little taste how great it's going to be there okay so god who knows you like i think you could be surprised on who's in heaven of course i'm supposed to say that because i'm a priest supposed to say that but even i think if you get to heaven you know you can ask god to raise up your dog or cat he might even know you're going to ask that and surprise you on what creature greets you at the gate of heaven and that little dog that you love or that little cat yes even cats get to heaven they have to go to purgatory first then they get to heaven ha <laughs> they'll get there if you get there now I don't know right obviously I wasn't there but I can I'm gonna make a really good case from the scriptures um, but it depends on humanity because the Bible will also say Jesus will say all of creation is groaning waiting for the redemption of the sons of man what is that about it's in labor pains mm -hmm. creation is experiencing some kind of suffering the Bible said by the one who subjected to it subjected it maybe the devil humanity falling and it's waiting for us to be right for the redemption of the sons of man. It's waiting for man and woman to become who God made us, right? To say yes to the person that he is calling you to be. Remember, the people who don't get to heaven, Jesus says, I don't know you, right? But God, because he's God, what he says comes about. And so when he put creation in our hands, he had a plan for creation. You know, the, the one line from my rap song about animals that I love was, hey, God made you a woman, he made you a man, your life has a purpose because he has a plan. Stewards of creation who care for the land, animals were here yo before we began right he makes the animal kingdom we i'm a fan of evolution you don't have to believe in evolution 
Um, I believe in evolution. It makes a lot of sense. Um, we like science. In, like, in Catholicism, we like science. We think God made the world, and he made the human mind, and he became human, so he has reason, you have reason, so there's nothing that reason can uncover that will ever contradict anything we believe. Dinosaurs are great. Without them, we wouldn't have fossil fuels. We would just have fuels and no fossils, right? And how could you get a fossil watch without fossil fuels? I, I don't know. I don't have a fossil watch. I have a, I have a Fitbit. <laughs> okay. That being said, humanity, we domesticate animals, right? Domus. What does that mean, right? Domus means house, like dormitory. You would think, right, this is where college kids are like now, like, I don't want to go back to the dormitory because there's going to be the coronavirus in college, and the colleges need us to come back because they don't have enough finances, and so they're going to bring us there to make... It's a big mess. I'm not weighing in on that issue right now. But we, when we domesticate animals, we bring them into our own home. Well, that ability to actually associate with a creature, right? And so this is why, like, humans and dogs get along so well. We've domesticated them... And we have more history domesticating them, I believe, than cats. That's why cats are semi-domesticated. They're still independent and they're kind of related to us, but dogs are further along. Cats eventually will, will come there, I, th I think. I don't know, I'm not a zoologist. Um, but if humanity can bring an animal into our life here and God gives us the ability to extend his life out to others, it seems logically consistent that we could then invite creation into a relationship with God through us. Now, philosophers and scientists, philosophers really will say that we're different than animals. Of course, we are different. We have some of the things that they share and some things that are different, right? Think about it like these, this plant, it can grow. And this is from Aristotle, those who study philosophy, right? And this has every living thing, has the, the principle of life in the thing, Aristotle will say, is the spirit, the soul, right? And so what is the state of a vegetative soul? Right, we have, he'll make a distinction between vegetative animal and, and rational human. Right. Well, this can grow and reproduce. It can take in nutrients and it can grow, and that's that's really all that it can do. Right. Dogs and cats, they have the same powers as a, as a plant. They can take in nutrients. They can grow. They can reproduce. But they also have memory, and they can move, um, and they have perceptions. And plants have some ability to respond to the environment. Otherwise, they would never grow thorns. Right. Or like this color, it's responding to the sun, the sunflower, right? But animals have all these powers, and then they have a whole other package that they get. And humans, we have all that more because we have also rational thought, right? Um, and philosophers will use some of this as argument for why we can say our souls are eternal, and that's a whole other conversation. But yes, that makes sense, and you can study this in Plato and Aristotle. Uh, and if you read those Frank Sheed books I talked about many weeks ago, it'll be in there too. Uh, but so for dogs and cats, though... Well, they have, like they'll say, like some philosophers say, no, they, they, their soul is not eternal because they can't think like we do. Well, yeah, they can't think like us, but that doesn't mean they're not thinking. We have to open up what that means, and this is not the video for that. For a dog, its primary sense is not eyesight. For us, our brains and eyes have evolved together, right? And uh, Jordan Peterson, other psychologists will say that the, he was quoting some guy that, like, the human brain evolved with our eyeballs to be able to detect snakes. I don't know if that's the case or not, but but we do a lot of thinking with images because of our eyes. But for a dog, and I know people that have blind dogs, and they ask me to bless them, a dog can exist without eyesight and get along fine through its scent of its sense, its sense of smell. When I bring the groceries in, I always bring them past Cragley to smell the bag as I bring it in the house, and she's always curious to smell. What are you bringing in, Dad? Right. For a dog, like personhood is not, I don't think, an image. I think it's a scent. You know, what is what does a person smell like? And I don't mean like, like you know, or Kirk Cousins. Some people say he stinks. I like Kirk Cousins. He's a good Christian man. Father Dave, aren't you going to boycott the NFL this year? Well, that's my plan right now, but we'll see. We did cancel the direct TV package with the NFL. That may be a protest enough. We'll see what happens, right? That's a whole other conversation. I don't, I don't like politics in sports. I think sports is a great way for people to just enjoy each other and our culture is overly politicized I don't like commercials and so let's just have sports be sports is my opinion you don't have to agree with that at all you don't have to agree with any of this but so we'll see we'll see with my protest of the NFL uh, I may just who knows if, 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 if I can watch the games even on the internet or something like that without having to watch politics I will frankly knowing myself because I'm weak and I love the Vikings but I don't want it, politics and sports. I just want to be able to enjoy a game and football. 
Right, that means let's get back to dogs and cats. Uh, do they have an eternal soul? There's the question, right? And so philosophers in the past, I think, until they developed an appreciation for, like Alistair McIntyre will talk about maybe with dolphins uh, and uh, elephants, chimpanzees, I would make a case for dogs. Um, in the past, the answer has been no from philosophers, but they don't know. We're just thinking, right? I mean, they just thought animals were reactionary things, so I can make a case that that's not the case. And if we think about dogs and personhood and identity and image, and so we have to actually think of sense, smell. Whole other conversation. I'm probably losing you right now. I think it works like this. I think when your dog or cat dies, it's gone. It no longer exists. And I'm not trying to say, like, oh, Father Dave, what about the Rainbow Bridge? I think when your dog or cat dies, it's, it's over. Because it's not owed heaven. God did not say in the very beginning of creation to dogs that we know of, maybe he did it before we got on the scene, you know, coming to my father's house. We know he spoke that to humans, right? So every human being is destined for heaven. That doesn't mean they get there, but babies that die in the womb get to heaven, right? The miscarriage that maybe someone had in your family, my family, those babies come to heaven because they were, meant, they were, they were given an invitation, like Harry Potter living under the stairs, given an invitation to come to Hogwarts. Right? Humanity is given that invitation. You're free to reject it, and those who do right, choose to go to hell themselves, so they go there. But anyone who doesn't reject it and chooses to accept it gets to heaven. We don't know that's the case for animals, and I think it works like this. I think um, that the natural world, when, it, when a creature dies, your dog or cat dies, it's gone. It's not, it thought that it's not punished. It's not owed heaven. In fact, heaven was probably being able to sleep on your couch and get belly rubs and get treats and play with laser pointers and be part of your family. Like, a dog's life in the wild is very rough. It's cruel. It's cold. It's full of disease and pain and striving and and it's a hardship. And being able to be in our lives is a really great thing. right? Not for animals that are abused by people. For those creatures, you know, that's a terrible thing, and those humans are going to have to answer for that, because we have to answer for all our actions. If you harm God's creation, ho oh, oh, ho, that's going to be tough, right? Had a cruelty and stuff like that. Not going to happen, not going to be good for you. But I think the dog cat, once it dies, it's gone. It's not suffering, it's just gone. It's over. Until you get to heaven, or someone that loves that creature. If you get to heaven, I think you can ask God to raise up that creature, and in fact, again, I think he knows what like if you if you know that your friend loves ice cream and pizza when and that they would want nothing more than to have pizza and ice cream you know if you're celebrating a birthday for your friend what are you going to have you're going to have pizza and ice cream and have jennifer aniston there too and the minnesota viking cheerleaders and kurt cousin right oh that'd be awesome that'd be awesome with some pork leg and cheese and some doritos and that it's a party it is a party um and so god is that good man that he knows you love your dog or cat, and if you keep his commandments and put him first and get to heaven, congratulations, you'll have them again. Uh, and in that room in the Father's house will be that creature that you love, and be everybody that you love, the people that, and the people that are free who have also chosen to love you and love God and love their enemies even. They're going to be there as well. All right, hope this makes some sense. A lot more to come at a future talk and book and who knows. All right, God bless you guys. Thanks.